الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الذي أنزل على عبده الكتاب ويجلو ختامه لكتب الأربعة وبين في الهلال والحرام أحمد سبحانه وتعالى الذي علم القرآن خلق الإنسان كما البيان لله الذي يعمر بالقراءات بالقراءات العلم والذي فضل العلم على كل شيء أحمد أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وجاءوا لا شريك له الواحد والقرآن لعالم ولمتعلم وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله محمد المصطفى المجتبى المقتار صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا بعد الله سمع تبارك وتعالى يقول ومن الناس والدواب والعناء مختلف ألوانه كذلك إنما يخشى الله من عباده العلماء الله عزيز جفور وعيدا يرفع الله الذين آمنوا منكم والذين أوتوا العلم درجات والله بما تعملون خبير يا أيها الذين آمنوا تكوا الله وكلوا كولا سديدا يصلي لكم عملكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطيع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما Thank Allah uh, We are grateful to the one who has revealed the glorious Quran and in it, he has made it the seal of all the books in which all the previous books that were revealed were inside it. Neat things that are allowed and things that are forbidden are clearly stated. We thank him once again. The one that is the one that teaches, that gives the knowledge of the Quran. He is the creator of all the creatures. The one that we don't or is the one that gives the knowledge of the clear proof to whom that he loves. Thank him once again, the one that has commanded the reading or the learning at every point of our life. And also the one that has made knowledge that above everything that he has created. We thank him once again because he's one who is unique and he does not have people, he does not have other deity of worship around him. He is the one that decides, is the decider of affairs, and is the one that decides, is the one that knows, and is the one that also teaches and gives the knowledge to whomever that pleases to him. We also testify that our noble Prophet Muhammad, Sallallahu Alaihi that he is, is his messenger, the one that was chosen, and the one that was loved, and the one that was appointed only by him because of the knowledge that has given to him above all other creatures. Peace and blessing of Allah be upon him. Those who follow him. Members of his household until the day of the Amor. Servant of Allah. That tells us in Surah 35 by our testimonies among human beings that he has created and other animals and those who also have four legs that you can refer to as mammals. That he has created them in different colors, in different shapes. But I say with that, that among those that are conscious of Allah, that serve Almighty Allah, are those that are knowledgeable among them. But I say Allah that receive him, he is the one that forgives and is also massive. Allah also tells us in Surah 58, Ayah 11, that Allah has raised those who are human among you, and those who have knowledge, a particular level among other ones, that you should know that Almighty Allah is aware of everything which we do, and He give us the information about what we have done. For you who believe, Ya Allah, and always say the right thing at the right time. If you do this, Allah will cleanse you of your bad work, He forgives you of your sins. And whomsoever follow Allah and his messenger, as in this the test of us. Alhamdulillah. 
الله الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين we thank Allah once again now we are grateful to him we thank him for giving us movement thank him for giving us life as we know it's not because of our strength but we know it's because of his mind today a topic will be the one that we all know i put it as education a name to contemporary Nigerian Muslims. We look at ourselves as a nation. We look at ourselves as a community that believes in Almighty Allah. Then we look at what they call education today and we ask ourselves what is our position? What is that level? And the kind of education which we have, what did we use it for? We even ask ourselves. What type of education have we acquired? What purpose have we acquired this purpose? That is why I say, if we all answer that question sincerely in our mind, we know that the Muslims were challenged with education. Yes, we have pockets of few among us that could be regarded as educated, but they are not enough, and that is why it is a challenge to us. And let me start by defining what education is by Oxford English Dictionary. That is a systematic training and instruction, and also knowledge and abilities, development of character and mental power resulting from such training. In Islam, knowledge is connected with worship. Because Allah says in Adis Kudusi that Farifuni Kabla and Tabuduni, Wailan Farifuni Fakaifa Yabudu, that you should know me before you worship me. If you do not know me, how are you going to worship me? So it means those who worship Allah, the first prerequisite is actually knowledge. And also, acquisition of knowledge in Islam is worship. Reading the Quran is worship. Traveling to gain knowledge is equally worship. And practice of knowledge is connected with ethics and morality and also ibadat. But Allah said in the Maya Chami Dibadi, that among the servants, only those who worship him or who are conscious of him are those who are knowledgeable among them. Do not deceive yourself. That the knowledge I'm talking about is just the knowledge of the Quran. Just knowledge of the Quran is the fundamental, is the basis of all the knowledge. If you understand the knowledge of the Quran, you can be rest assured that you have all the knowledge that are in existence, if you have it sincerely. First and foremost, crucial thing on individual in Islam is acquisition of knowledge. As the first command I like gave to the prophets, as we all know, is Ikra, which means go and read. Ikra, go and seek for knowledge. Ikra, live from one place to another to go and know more about your God, about your environment, about how you are going to survive. Not just here, but also in the year after. In Islam, correct knowledge must come before correct action. Partial and false knowledge could lead to wrong and disastrous conduct, as we might not be informed as to what pleases Allah and even fellow human beings. We have some Muslims that the kind of knowledge they have today, it is the knowledge that we even tell them that all other Muslims that do not believe in what they believe, they are kafir and they deserve to be killed, those people. You cannot say they do not have knowledge, but they do not have the knowledge, the real knowledge of Islam. Our attitude to knowledge is an important part of our worldview. How well we understand and fulfill our role as human beings will depend on three things. One, the type and level of knowledge we acquire. Two, the sources we depend on and the ways in which we gain those knowledge. And thirdly, the purposes for which we use our knowledge. But Islamically speaking, the main purpose of acquiring knowledge is to bring us closer to Almighty Allah. Because Allah says, Waman Kalak to Nijin Nawala Insa, Il Dali Yabuduni. That the essence of everything, the essence of creation, it is to worship Almighty Allah. And Allah also tells us in the verse of the Quran that 
inna salati wa nuzuki wa mahyaya wa mamati lillahi rabbil alamin my life my death and everything that which i do my prayers and all my devotion belong to almighty allah so it means everything we have gotten in this life it is the essence is to worship almighty allah in islam education is not simply for the gratification of the mind or senses it is not knowledge for its own sake or sciences for its own sake knowledge accordingly must be linked with value and goal and that is why you see that the kind of knowledge we all acquire it is a value it is a knowledge that make us yes man and that is why you see hardly can you see anybody that only what the kind of knowledge they acquire it is the so called western knowledge or even those people who acquire the so called islamic knowledge because the intention and the way i will acquire it will not make it will not make them different from other people that they were working with the developed countries and people are developed based on their educational goals values and achievements true knowledge basically does not necessarily means your diplomas it does not mean certificates or degree or degree certificates which does not only guarantee really real ready income and good standard of living but also assure future both here and in the hereafter that is why the kind of training that we should be giving to our children to be a mixed education that is education that is means with their survival in this world and survival in the hereafter most of us today the kind of education we give to our parents so we give to our children it is education in which the children will only survive in this world and in the hereafter they may find it difficult to go but we pray that Allah will guide us so that our children they will be they will not be problem for us both here and in the hereafter education in islam is compulsory for both male and female and it is from the cradle to the grave it is a ladder to climb for closeness to allah education makes the life of a muslim fulfilled one it is also used as a ransom during the time of the holy prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam it is the only way for communal development to preach a free just and egalitarian society it is an assurance of godly society and above all a future assured the development of a particular nation group society or family will be determined by the level of educational development of its member no wonder the americans the europeans even the asians are being referred to as developed because of the kind of interest they show to education and the educated ones unlike the third world countries especially our country here that pay less attention to education and its educated ones however the most the muslims in medieval period between the 10th and 15th century when europe was in dark ages the muslims were the custodians the torch bearers and the pivots of what is then known as knowledge and education in the entire world our leader the noble prophet muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam was to be emulated as all his life and times were based on acquisition of and dissemination of knowledge he allow a prisoner of war to go scot free if he can train or he can train or educate a particular number of muslims in the act of reading and writing he was the most historical figure in the whole world as the minute details of his life were recorded even jesus christ alayhi salatu wasalam does not have such an opportunity i do not know whether you have read some books how the prophet smiled why the prophet smiled how the prophet reacted to a question no human being in life has such an opportunity except our holy prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam he was able to achieve that not because he was better than any of them but because of the premium he placed on education and that is why up to today no human being no name is as popular as important as the name muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam if you also want to find out that go online and just click 
what is the most popular name on earth today, it will tell you it is Muhammad. The reason being that the kind of thing our Prophet وسلم, placed on education, and those who follow him, they were not left out in Baghdad. A center of learning was set up, which could be referred to as a university, a research center. It is called Baitul Hikmah, a center that writes books, compiles books, translates and trains students, and they maintain world-class library. If you want to look at what we now know as modern-day education, let us look at the history of education. When we know the history of this education as Muslims, many of us will sit down and cry that we that we are the one that owns education. Today, when they talk, it looks strange to us. I will take us to history lane. I have for us to know the first and the only university that is surviving up to today in the world. We all know. Many of us, if they ask us which one is the first university in the world, the answer we will give is Azhar University. Azhar University was established in 970 AD. It means Azhar University was the second university and the first university in the world was the University of Farawiyi in Morocco, which was established by a lady. And today, the university is still functioning. You might not know, we still have the third university that I used to refer to as multi-campus university. They call it the Nizamiya Academy. The Nizamiya Academy was established in 1065 AD, and it has campuses in Nisapu, in Baghdad, in Herat, in Damascus, and in Basra. It means we want to calculate the university the Muslim have up to the year 1065. We have like seven universities. As at that time, Europe has not gotten one. The first one that Europe got was in 1088 AD in the college, University of Bologna in Italy. Well, now if you calculate the first university in the world and the first time university got to the Europe, there are difference of 250 years between the Muslim world that we have gotten about seven universities before the first one got to Europe. It is we that Muslim that we own about seven universities before even the first one got to Europe. And we are the one people will now tell us we do not know anything. And we are the one that have been referred to as not knowledgeable. The question now is present day Muslim, especially in Nigeria, what are we doing? And what legacy are we going to leave behind? That by the time we leave, let me assure us, if you have one million now, the moment, the day they are burying you, nobody will remember the number of houses you have. If you have the best car or house, when they, are, they want to bury you, nobody will remember your car. I do not know whether I've told all the story of one woman that her father has one small, one very big car that only the father and driver used to drive the car. Even the children, the father will not allow his children to enter the car. The woman told all the story. Say the day her father died. It is that car that her father will not allow anybody to enter. It's what they were using to buy firewood. And that day that he died. Then what is the problem? What are you what are you celebrating? What do you think you have gotten that you think you have arrived? You are not anybody. If people around you, you cannot make them to be educated. Also, during the Abbasid rule of the Muslim Empire, like I said, a mosque in Cairo, just a mosque, come to what we now refer to as their university. It will not be out of point. For us Muslims to understand that the development of sciences that the entire world is proud of today actually started by the Muslims. For example, the zero, which every science is based upon today, was actually discovered by the Muslims around that time. But what could be regarded as the world golden age in education was in the Muslim, was in the hand of the Muslims in Andalus. The present day Spain, they develop a university which trained even Christians all over Europe. They established a library of over 600,000 books, which up to today is see one of the best that you can be regarded as a library. No wonder. In the book, Islam and Arab Civilization, the author wrote, and I quote, 
He said, when the Muslims were the pioneers of science and technology in the world and held the torch of civilization, our situation in Europe was such that the world's fault of, Mus of Muslim libraries and schools was one form of barbarism ruled over us when the Muslim libraries and schools of higher education in Spain enroll students from all over the world, our scientific centers in the heart of Europe were inside forts where self-made stands and idle thoughts of our monks were being taught. This is actually the opinion of non-Muslims about the education of the Muslims. Also, in the early colonial period, let's come back to Nigeria and see how our fathers, what they have done about education in Nigeria and for us to now mark ourselves, what are we doing today as far as education is concerned? We all know that when the colonial masters came, they separated Islamic education from Western education. And they now decided that nobody would be able to go to school without him losing his Islamic identity. That is why some Islamic organizations in Nigeria like Ansaruddin Society, the Hamadiyya, the Zumratul, the Zumratul Yujaj, the Sabatuddin, and Hizbullah Rijali, they were all trying to make sure that they established school. Even in recently in the north, we have some Islamic school in Kasina and in different parts. But do we say this is enough for us? And let me even tell you, as late as 50 years ago, to let you know that the Muslims, they face a lot of challenge in which that the children must go to school and they must establish their own. Let me tell you of a story of a particular school in my area. They, they launched in 1974, they did fundraising, fundraising on Saturday in September 1974. And the local government brought police that where they want to build the school, nobody must build any school there. And they threatened that they are going to bring police by Monday so that they will not allow them to build the school. It is called Islamic Grammar School. And do you know what the Muslim of that time did? They mobilized every Muslim who are artisans, the bricklayers, the carpenters, the painters. In 24 hours, they built a class of six, a, a block of six classrooms. By the time they brought police on Monday, there was a school that was standing. And that school, they call it Almighty School up to today. This September, that school marked 50 years anniversary. Of his existence. It's a challenge to all of us. What have you done that people will talk about you as far as education is concerned? What have we done that people will remember that you are there? This one will remind me of one of our brothers that's just graduated, that's just leaving the university campus today, Professor Isaac Oloyede, who has used his knowledge of Islam to make sure that Islam becomes more clear, it becomes more endearing to everybody. We pray Almighty Allah in his infinite mercy to continue to bless and support him and create more of Isaac Lord Day for us among the Muslims so that we will all be proud and say that this is one of us and almost all of us that are here. We should ask ourselves, I do not know whether you follow what is happening in jam exam. That if, if you look at the statistics of jam exam, the number of Muslims who apply, I did not say those who pass, they are less than 30%. If you go to university institutions now, the number of students that are in the university, if you listen, if you go there, you discover that the Muslims in the university are from ABU. I use ABU to be the headquarters of the, of the school that will have more Muslims. You have less than 30% of the students in that university. And if you look at the lecturers, the lecturers are, that are Muslim, there are less than 20% that are Muslim. If you now want to look at the vice chancellors of the university, including all the ones that are Muslims, the Muslims that are vice chancellors in Nigerian university, they are less than 20%. And we are all watching. We are all looking. And we are bringing, we are building big, big houses. We are bringing, buying big, big cars. We want to travel abroad for nothing safe. And we still ask ourselves, you remember how the National Mosque was built? It was built by late there are Musayar Adua, who mobilize everybody that the mosque must be built. Once we have somebody like Nesi Adua again, who will mobilize that we have National Islamic University in Nigeria? 
We have the money, we have the power, we have the resources, but nobody will be interested. If somebody wants to leave, we can even that is even a cheap way that the Muslim we can raise money, and that cheap way it is in those who will be performing hard. I do not know whether you have heard that this year's hard they have said that it is 10 million naira for anybody who will pay for those who want to perform hard. For God's sake, many of our people have gone to us for 10, 20, 30, 40 times, and you ask them, What have they brought from it? To me, I've not seen anything that they have brought from it. If the Nigerian Muslim, we all come together, that when you are paying for Hajj, you pay 500,000 Naira as education levy. If about 60,000 Muslims are performing Hajj, if you pay 500,000 Naira, and those who are performing Umrah, they also pay 500,000 Naira education levy. I will remove that. In two years, we have more than three to five billion Naira. Then we can start our own university. And we can even make it free for children of little background who might not have money to pay. And the Muslim will not do this. We want to brag. We want to show up. We want to tell people that we are the one in charge. We want to tell people that we are the one in position. I do not know whether you are aware. Former president of America celebrated the 200 year anniversary about three days ago, asking whether he still remember his name. Doesn't know anything again. Then what is the price? I'm only telling you about one man who pride himself as the most powerful man in the world at a particular point in time. He was actually the first president of America to have come to Nigeria. If you ask him whether he still remember Nigeria, perhaps he will not remember again. The point I'm trying to raise, your position, your possession is going to be a reflex when you don't use it in the right manner. Not need all those things that you are working up and down with. They are nothing to you. What you need, it is something that when you live, so that you will not die for life. Many people will not die because of what they have done. If you notice the name of the prophet, it's getting bigger and wider and more acceptable, even when he was no more alive. When the prophet died, how many houses does he have? How many cars does he have? Perhaps if you want to count houses, he probably did not have a single one. Beside the fathers, he left the mosque for us, which today we are all living. If you ask me. Many of us, Allah has given us the opportunity. We have houses about 300 million out that is worth 300 million naira. We have houses about 500 million naira. And we think about 10% of that to take it and to raise other people. To pray that Allah in his infinite mind. We continue to open our eyes so that we know what is good for us and what is good for us. We should know that the present day jihad it is about education. It is about intelligence. When you don't have it, you become the slave of the world. Pray that we continue to be leaders that Allah has made us to do what is good. The Prophet was reported to have said, Ali Ilim, that knowledge before any other work that you want to do. In Allah, I am moving al Wali Yitan. But if I had to for the bow, I am not sure what I'm going to do. Life of man justice, the king of good and liberal to fit and king. You forbid all things to be good, justice and rebellion. You're talking about the mirror. 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 You're talking about the Thank you.